Hello and welcome to the Heresy Lodge. I'm your host, Dylan Cooper, with the Cats Coast over here. Gavin Franklin. And guys, we are here this week to preview Mark of Kauth, which is an anthology. So like all anthologies, we will do this, we'll have our review, and then we will have a special episode. Uh, we do already know what's going to be going on with that. I uh, guess we can announce it if you want. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I haven't been in touch with the logistics. So if you feel confident, yeah. So this is definitely happening. Uh, we are actually going to have the hosts of Horse Hour on our podcast, which is another Horse Heresy podcast. They also do something similar. They but they just only review the books. I was actually on an episode today. I helped record and should be hearing from me. I think on Saturday this is the episode I'll be on. I'm only on there for like 10 or 15 minutes, and we literally just talk about whether Magnus did something wrong. And turns out he definitely did something wrong. <laughs> Anyone who reads the books can't deny it. <laughs> yes, exactly. If you haven't read the books and you say he he didn't do anything wrong, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> But guys, as always, you if you want to interact with us, if maybe one day we have our own guests on the show that are our listeners, you can do that by just talking to us. Join our Discord. It is pinned to our Twitter at Heresy Lodge. You can email us at theheresylodge at gmo.com. If you feel like contributing to the podcast at all, we have tips enabled on our Twitter. Any money that goes into that comes right back into the podcast, whether it's tabletop, new equipment for here, whatever. All all the goods, everything comes back into the podcast because that's how we roll. You can also email us at theharrisdealodge at gmail.com. And if you're listening on YouTube or watching whatever it is you do on there, please like and subscribe. And that's it. Let's get into Mark of Kauth. Yeah, just real quick, though, we kind of mentioned uh, how, how we do funnel stuff into the tabletop. We are doing our first battle report this weekend is the plan uh, yes. pending snowstorm situation or however that works out. So um, that will be coming in the next couple of weeks, probably to uh, a YouTube near you. So yes, look out for that. It will be Grey Knights versus Tau pre Tau Codex. Yeah, I think we're going to do a pre and post Tau Codex. I'm going to bring an army that you typically would see in ninth edition currently po- uh, pre Tau Codex and then Next battle, hopefully, depending on the release schedule of the Codex, <laughs> will be um, a typical army you would bring, or I think, you know, who knows, because yeah. people probably won't figure it out for a while, post, post-Codex, post and we'll get to try out some of the cool stuff. Um, yeah, but unfortunately, this one will be pre-Codex, and then we'll be looking out for some Thousand Sons and maybe Death Guard in the future, so, yeah. Yep, and hopefully, World Eaters, baby. Man, that's the far future. We'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see what happens with them. It'll be fun. I'm very excited, though. We've been painting like maniacs to make sure we have good production quality. Guys, we've got it all figured out. We're geniuses. Yes, 10 out of 10. Our IQ Absolutely. is off the chart. It's been nuts. <laughs> uh, but what are you drinking today, sir? Because I heard you have something oh, shit. awesome. Yes. So it's a shame that you weren't here for this episode because I bought it with both of us in mind because it made sense. So I am drinking Heretic Lager, and this is by by a brewery of some sort. Um, Heretic Brewing Company. Yes. Ooh. So 10 out of 10, Heretic Brewing Company, for your name. Your beer is also ah. pretty good. This is a German lager, and I mean, it's solid. I enjoy it. I also just like German beer, because, you know. Well, they're, I feel like every time I think of German beer, I just think of Oktoberfest. I think of, like, OG beer. Like yes. When, when I hear German beer, I'm like, they know what they're doing. Exactly. Doing it forever. I also didn't mean, like, the drink Oktoberfest. I mean, like, the event Oktoberfest. Like, yeah. like, this should be in a fucking boot. And I'm like, yeah, just chug it. Speaking of a, a fancy glass to drink out of. Ah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> the beer I have in my very nice Thousand Sons Heresy Lodge mug. Um, I am drinking 
uh, Country Boy. I've had this on the podcast before. I had Cougar Bait on the podcast before. Yes. Yeah, because it uh, was you. You're the Cougar yes, Bait. Yes, I am the Cougar Bait. <laughs> this is called Halfway Home. It is an American Pale Ale, and let me tell you, it is fucking great. I have been impressed with this brewery. It, I've been to this brewery now in Lexington. It's one of the few I've been to. I got very smashed. <laughs> you would never do such a thing. <laughs> it was like one of those things where I think like Katie had a friend over and they're like, hey, do you want to go to a winery? I'm like, sure, I'll go to a winery, whatever. Sounds lame. So like three breweries later, <laughs> I'm a country boy. And uh, this it's actually very, very good. And they're, I think they're a very quality uh, brewery. But yeah, Man, so this is. I would have been so obnoxious there. Like, I would have just like talked in like a country accent the entire time, just to be just because I'm myself. And if I've been drinking, <laughs> it's weird because it's like a college town because Lexington is home to uh, UK. So it's like a very college y place, yes. which I th- like Lexington to me. In my mind, like I'm thinking of like, you know, the South, the farmers <laughs> and the horses. <laughs> well, I am at Country Boys Brewing. Or you got yourself ten hundred dollars. But no, it's very it's a pretty interesting town for sure. I've been enjoying it. We're going out this weekend to like a fancy restaurant. So it's one of three in Lexington. So hey, we'll see what that looks like. Just put it on Put on a pedestal to um, Harry and Izzy's. Mm. Or even St. Elmo's. See, I like St. Elmo's, but it's too pretentious for me. It is a little pretentious. Harry and Izzy's is the way to go. Anyone who's in Indianapolis will know what we're talking about, but we digress. Yes. So here we All are. All three of you Indianapolis listeners, there you go. <laughs> we had a, we had a uh, podcast review emailed to us it was like a year in the podcast and it talked about it broke down a lot of our statistics for us and one of the things that i found interesting is our like number one area of listen to is um like people listen to us mainly in a t- it's like a small town in illinois <laughs> yes very random hey guys i have family in illinois if you're just my fucking family, I'm going to be so upset. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me. I almost want to figure out what it was because I want to I can probably pull like it a, up. Let me, let me see if I got it right here. Buzz Sprout. Okay, Buzz. This is how interested we are in Mark of Couth, guys. Here we go. <laughs> Lodge here in the review. Okay, top listening, top city. More sales, Illinois. Ten out of ten. Is I don't that, know that's where not you where are. your family's from, is right? That's not where your family I is. I don't think so. Okay. I, hope, I, I really was hope. Really not. concerned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's uh there's like four or five people that listen to us at sales. We Illinois. love all four or five of you. Unless some <laughs> dude just keeps losing his phone. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually just, he has his download on every single app and just keeps listening to us on repeat. And you know what? That's what I need in my life. If you want to be like my life coach, hit me up. In all reality, it's all five people that talk to us on Discord. It's just Daniel, like, re-downloading. <laughs> using he has a VPN. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. So, Mark of Cal. <laughs> so, I, this is what I want to say before we even start Mark of Cal. This is such, and we talked about this like a little before we started recording, such a terribly placed book. Yeah. Because we're coming right off of Betrayer, which is like the super hype thing and like... Fucking phenomenal. Lived up to the hype. Lived up to that, but also we just had a bunch of ward bearers. Bunch of, a bunch of ultramarines. Yeah. We had ultramarines, ward bearers, world eaters. And then what do we get in this book? More ultramarines, more ward bears. And like, god damn it, like break this up. Like, I would have rather this had either been before or later on. Like, I would rather I just move straight on the Vulcan lives because at least then we're getting something brand fucking new after the epic story of Betrayer. I was thinking that this book, here's the problem with the placement of this book, right? Is you have No No Fear. That was book 19. Obviously, this book can't come right after No No Fear. Right. Then you really, have the it should have been before it, I think. 
I don't know. We have like a, a couple stories that are post. And then we have the first story that's before. It's kind. It's One a weird story thing. Is before the rest are post. This definitely needed to come after. No, no. After. Mm-hmm. It, this should have waited. So here's the problem. Yeah, I wouldn't mind waiting. Cause here's the here's the situation we're in, and I understand their their issue with it. You have book nineteen, which is no no fear. Then you have book twenty, which is the Primarchs, which technically is an anthology. Yep. So in my mind, I was thinking I, I think this should come after the Primarchs, but you really want two anthologies in a row. So then you have fear to tread. So I'm like, okay, Fear to Tread ends in Ultramar. So I'm like, maybe that would have been a good place to throw. Yeah. And book. honestly, I've been able to have like a good short story for when Gil But you know what comes six, after? Or saying one is. You know what comes after Fear to Tread? Uh, it's, an, it's an anthology, isn't it? Shadows of Treachery. Yeah. Which was good. It was good. But the thing is, you don't want two of those. And then you have Angel Exterminatus and then Betrayer. So it's like, well, fuck. Like, no matter where you put this, you're either having two back-to-back anthologies. I think it would have been or... really good to have this after Vengeful Spirit. This is I, I disagree with that because the problem is all of this comes to culmination, I think, from my understanding, in the Unremembered Empire in Book 27. Does it? Yeah. Then, then I would maybe do Vulcan Liz before, just to break it up. Well, Unremembered Empire is Ultramarines, too. This is what I would have done Ugh. personally. I would have exchanged this book for Shadows of Treachery and pushed Shadows of Treachery back. Because Shadows of Treachery isn't dependent on anything. It's its kind yeah. of own... Well, actually, no, that's not true. Son of a bit. Because Shadows of Treachery does kind of play into the Unremembered Empire, from my understanding. So they had a difficult time with the organization of this. So they I think they kind of bit the bullet and were like, okay, we got to have Ultramarines and Word Bears and then Ultramarines and Word Bears. Huh, and Gross. It does. It makes us slog because I remember kind of in the beginning when we were looking at some of the books because we, we, we went Horse Rising Falls called Gods, Galaxy and Flames. And we we're like, wow, that was a lot of the same characters. But we liked it because we weren't used to this jumping around yet. We literally, mm-hmm. It was almost like reading Harry Potter, you know? Yeah, but another thing, too, well, though, is like, it's like all, it's with all... the short stories, it's just so it's like random shit. I am not a fan of the insane usage of short stories in this in this entire series. Yeah, I really enjoyed the very first one. Mm-hmm. And I enjoyed, I think it was Shadows of Treachery that was really good. Yeah. And the rest of them have just been like, okay, like they might have like one like banger. But like, for the most part, it just takes kind of too much away from like the main story in my opinion and there's too many like if it was more rare but the fact of the matter is like the fact that you don't know where to fit mark and cal because there's too many other short story books that you don't want to have them back to back it's like yeah. maybe you should evaluate that a little bit but also i mean these are just like these were short stories that were released and then they just like put together and then made a book out of it what what was the point of that yeah i get what you're saying like so where, where are you gonna find like a random like a single short story. Yeah. So, kind of like what I'm saying is like, we had the first three books, and it was all one Legion. And then we have yeah, Fly to Eisenstein, Fulgrim, whatever. And then we finally arrive at Mechanicum. And it's like, whoa, this is not a Stardis. This yeah. is a book that's not a Stardis. And it seemed very weird. But, and, and in my opinion, it might be the worst book, the second worst book in the heresy so far. But the idea is like they obviously wanted to jump around to give you some relief of a story because they realize they can't keep your interest for 1000 pages. Yeah. But here they had no choice but to say, here's a thousand pages of Word <laughs> Bears and Space Marines. And I got to tell you, like, Word Bears suck. <laughs> Yes. Yes, they do. There's only one that was redeemable, and he's dead. <laughs> the other thing is, like, ADB is the only person I've seen to even write word bears in a redeemable way. So this book, this book also falls prey to a very central problem in the Horus Heresy, is the fact that you have multiple authors writing it. Mm-hmm. And I think this book, like, 
amplifies that because not only do you have multiple authors writing the horse heresy now you have multiple authors writing this book and this book is central around a specific theme and as you read more of it you're like there was not a lot of cohesion mm-hmm. in my opinion. i will also say too like especially with like short stories i we've talked about this a hundred times i love graham mcneil he's yeah. one of he's one of the best ones but man, every fucking short story he writes is a hundred pages, and it's like, dude, like, it's not even that I don't enjoy it. But when I'm when I'm reading these short stories, I yeah. want them to actually be short. I loved his short story in this book. It was it's probably my favorite story in this book so far. I thought it was interesting. However, it was just so long. I was like, dude, I don't I don't yeah. care about this anymore. Yeah, because when you get to a short story book. One thing that's really interesting about it and the reasons why they're redeemable, because a lot of times I feel like in a lot of other situations, it would just, they would be shit. But one of the things that's redeemable about this is there's so many climaxes. Mm-hmm. Right? Like you're reading it and you're like, you get to the end, but it's like a 30 page short story. So it's like you can you can sit down in a night before you go to bed and read a short story. Yeah. And it's kind of cool to have that experience sometimes. Like I did it last night. Like I sat down and wrote, read one of these short stories. Mm-hmm. And I did it in between meetings today. I wrote, read two of them because my job is sometimes a joke. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, well, um, we haven't even talked about the stories yet either. Shit. We haven't. So let me, the, I want to halt on talking about this. I wanted to halt on talking about the stories. So I think everything we said is is important. Yeah, I agree. And make sure you know the market cow. My expectations going into the book was this. This was going to be a collection of short stories that tied up loose ends in the cow story regarding um, primarily like we have Gilliman arrive at the end of Betrayer to Nicaea. How did he get there? What was he doing? What happened to the whole thing where they were going to have... Because if you remember at the end of Fear to Tread... Or not Fear to Tread. No, no, Fear. No, fear. It was... Uh, the last thing was like, and then it was the largest space battle that history yes. ever knew. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, we're going to get that here. You don't. You don't get it. <laughs> of course there not. is no short story about that in any way, shape, or form. Um, so I was expecting like some some ties to happen there. And I was expecting... Um, more of Gilliman, more of like the the Ultramarines and the Ward Bears after Kalf, but not on Kalf. And see, I actually really like the first story because it makes like one of Eris's, Erebus's abilities make sense. Not only that, okay. So I want to talk in the in the preview. I want to go over the whole first story. I know mm-hmm. that seems like that's a really thing. <laughs> I want to go over because I think it's like super important. And at the same time, like it was my men- mentality throughout the rest of the book and my thought process and why it failed me and why this book was more frustrating to me because of that. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about the shards of Erebus by Oh my gosh. Was it Nick Kime? No, it wasn't Nick. No, it was Guy Haley. Guy Haley. Guy Haley. First off, this was a great short story. I really like this one. Like it this start like this made awesome. like the book start off really great and then I went to Graham's and it was super long. I was like, ugh. <laughs> so hear, hear me out, right? This was my prediction going into the book. It was I'm gonna figure out what happened to people after Calf that are important. I'm going to learn about Thiel. I'm going to learn about how Gilliman arrived where he at. And I'm going to learn about Corfarion. Like, you know, like everything that happened yeah. for Corfarion. Okay, no. What this book made me do was fucking research shit. I've been writing down notes <laughs> because of this fucking... Oh, shit. Notes? It's been, dude, it's been crazy. Like, I've been going back to previous books, pulling out names, doing crazy stuff. Damn, you've so, had some time on your hands, sir. Dude, like... I was reading it last night. It was so frustrating to me because I want I want you to kind of like understand my mentality on this book. I'm just imagining like the fucking uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia meme where he has like all oh, the lines connected and you're like this is here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
So this story, okay, so this story outlined like an issue that I've had for a while. And I was like, ah, they're going to solve this issue. And they didn't. So Shorts Erebus was about the very beginning. Erebus takes the Anna theme. Now, the Anna theme, if we recall, was the, and it talks about in this book, it is the sword <laughs> that was used to kill Horus. Yep. And start this whole fucking shenanigans. He breaks it into eight pieces. And all of a sudden, my mind is like, ah. Oh, yeah. Because Fabius ah, should okay. have it right now. So here we go. So so we know. <laughs> we know. Okay. Fabius Bile has it. It was given to Fulgrim at some point. I'm assuming that's Fabius's. It was used by Erebus multiple times. It's been used by Corpharion on Cal. You know, like, where the fuck is this sword? Like, I'm like, what is this thing? Like, oh, okay, okay. It's been in eight pieces. Okay. Well, so. when I imagine, like, the shards, I'm literally imagining, like, like a like a splinter that they've somehow, like, made into a full-on dagger. They're like daggers, yeah. So, I wrote down, this is what I did. Oh, boy. <laughs> Where's the chart? Give me the chart. I know you drew it out. <laughs> it's not a chart. It's just a list, and it's an interesting list. But anyway, just I, question marks all over it. I wrote down some like some names. I'm oh, all to right. Shot. I did some research. So these shards in the book, there is. We'll go over the rest of the short this short story in the review because there's another part of this that's important. But these shards in the book are given to uh, word bears, specific word bears. And in my mind, this is what I thought. And I thought it would have made like the coolest book ever. Like I was super pumped after this book. I was like, oh, so these shards, the shards of Erebus are going to these seven other people. I bet you this story is going to be their individual stories at Cal, how they die what they do, what happens to them, and how eventually each of the shards either gets destroyed or ends up in a certain place. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> and I was like super pumped about it because I was like, okay, we're not only solving the story of the Anathem, we're in for like a really cool battle royale thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I thought it was going to be super interesting. But I ended up doing some note taking. So here we are. <laughs> in the notes, it says, important word bears. <laughs> <laughs> the first one is Lorgar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a weird one. <laughs> yeah, Lorgar. Okay, then we have Erebus. All right, we know Erebus. Erebus is a cunt. He's been there forever. <laughs> He's so fucking awful. He has a shard. I mean, he, he's the one that made all the daggers. But he, he gets it. He gets one of the shards. Yes. Okay. Then we have Corpharion. He is like cunt junior like he, i don't know man he might be a bigger cunt than erebus well yes he is a bigger cunt but the problem <laughs> is like the reason he's a bigger cunt is because he talks as much shit and like erebus talks so much shit and he can't back it up corfarin talks just as much shit and can back it up less that's my problem yeah corfarin, corfarin definitely has like a little man syndrome yes a hundred percent like <laughs> erebus does but like Corfarin takes it to the next level. Like it's kind He's of got a big ass truck with real big wheels. <laughs> <It's got> to... <laughs> and let me tell you, it runs on diesel. And when I <laughs> when I hit the gas, that that fucking <laughs> you best believe, you know, I fucking hate the environment. <laughs> <laughs> I kill it every That's time Corfarian. I start my truck. <laughs> That's Corfarion's guy. And then we have Argotal. I brought his name in. And then right beside him, I wrote. Yeah, we just yeah. lost all of our Illinois listeners. <laughs> <laughs> I live in Kentucky. They can deal with it. <laughs> so next to Argotal, I have dead Erebus. Okay, that makes sense. Argotal did not receive a shard. He was not one of the people that received the shard. No, he wasn't. I don't know what the word I was going to say was. Never mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he wasn't one of the chosen. <laughs> he wasn't, well, which I feel like if Margot Tall was there, he'd be like, I'm fucking out here. This is weird. <laughs> He's like, man, <laughs> anything like, with you, Airbus, you're a bitch. I ain't, I ain't dealing with this. Then we have Fodal Fell. Okay. 
we have three names. I'm going to name these two names. Photo Fell, Paul Belloff, and Morple Sixer. This is yours. C-X-I-R. How the fuck do you pronounce that? Uh, how did I pronounce that? Sear? Sear? Well, let me, let me stare at it for a minute. It's in the character chart on Grams because his book's so fucking long, I got a character chart. Oh, uh, God, where the hell does this book start at? Um, He's not in the book. Oh, really? I thought he was for some reason. No, not in that one. He's in... Oh, uh, I was mixing that with Malak, I think. Yeah. So, we'll say six Yeah, here. six here. Oh, six here, yeah. So, Morble six here, he gets one of the daggers. He's dead. He was killed by uh, Solus, who is someone on Kalth that also died on Kalth. He was an ultramarine. Mm-hmm. If we remember, he was the word bearer. Is he the one that summoned Samus? Yes, he's the word bearer that died because they like they stabbed him with the they stabbed him with the anathema. And then I had this epiphany. I was like, ah, I see what's happening. So six years dead, they stabbed him with the anathema. And now the shard's gone, or whatever. You know, what I find extra weird, now that I think about it, a fuck ton of, like, the cultists also had, like, similar-looking daggers. Dude, I'm not done with this, trust me. Okay, I'm I'm ready. (laughs) (laughs) So then we have We went dark net here. We only have people that are named that are given shards that we don't know. Fail... Babor, Kor Vondor, Kolos Ndil. We don't fucking know these people. They're people I, that come up Fel was mentioned in No No Fear. No, you're thinking full. You're thinking of Photo Fell. F E L L. This fail is P H A E L. Different. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're photo, right. <laughs> photo Fail is in this. He does receive a dagger, but it is not the same person. <laughs> okay, so. All right, so that's the thing, okay? Then we have a guy. His name is Malak Kartho. Malak Kartho is a word bearer that is Hall Belloth's, like, psyker librarian dude. He follows Hall Belloth throughout the entire Siege of Cal, and he's, like, telling Hall Belloth what he needs to do. Okay, now, this is what I'm saying. Think about where we're at right now. This is where the book is wrong. <laughs> the book just needs to calm the fuck down. There's too many names. There's too much shit going on. And none of the names, some of the names don't even mean, mean anything. Like, they're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Okay. Let me explain this to you. This is how it gets. There's a guy. There's a cultist. And, and um, no, no fear. His name is Kroll Faust. Okay. He has an anatheme. He got it from a guy named Arul Zen. Okay. Man, you were real deep. Arul Zen is mentioned in this book. He is part of one of the stories, but it does not explain the transfer or how he got it or where it goes to. Okay. Fabius Bile is in possession of an anatheme. He has the whole fucking sword, though. Apparently, <laughs> he doesn't is, have a dagger. He is a whole fucking sword, which is obviously not right because not only does he have it, but they use it in the ritual to make Fulgrim a demon, which we know is like going on around this time, kinda. Because we know for a fact that the word bearers and um and the world eaters left Isfahan like immediately and spent a year in the warp traveling to. Ultramar, right? Yeah. We understand that from Betrayer. Because, like, Lorgar was like, it's been a year since this Vaughn, and the whole time we spent, like, fucking around killing planets. You know, what I really would have actually liked as a story, and I, I mean, I haven't finished this book, so I don't know if this is the thing. I would have liked, like, a sit down of Horus with the traitor Primarch, like, this is our plan. You're going here, you're going here. Like, Lorgar, I'm taking. 
you and Angron are gonna go take over Ultramar, like yeah. something like that. To that be way, like, at least okay, this go. makes sense. Like, who's going where? Like, oh, I sent Fulgrim over here. Portoraba, you're over here. Yeah, like you said, we we know, like we know the like Horus and Fulgrim to literally. He, he sent Fulgrim to Terra. Fulgrim, I think Fulgrim he knew was like, he was not getting there. Nah, that's <laughs> stupid, dog. I ain't going to Terra. <laughs> he sent poor Rabo to fuck around. Like, who knows what Mortarian's doing now? Mortarian's slowly becoming the Primarch, like, Jack of Khan. Like, Mortarian, like, was <laughs> We haven't seen Death Guard forever. I know. Like, Mortarian, Mortarian's slowly reaching Vulcan and Jack of Khan. We're not going to see him until Buried Dagger, <laughs> so, well, <we laughs> which is him. the last book in the series. Yeah. So, um, we know Fabius Bell has it. There's also a guy in this story. There's two more people in this book that get a hold of Anna Themes that don't, don't explain how they got a hold of Anna Themes, by the way. There's a guy named Marduk who gets a hold of the anatheme. And, oh my gosh. Uh, oh my gosh. What is the guy's name? And I don't have him written down. I should have written him down. Oh, and, shit. And fear, or no, no fear. Uh-huh. He's the, the word bearer that made the first kill. He was like the friend. <laughs> I don't, it was talked about in the, literally the last story I read. Let me was see it? if I can find it. Uh, I can't remember his name. But he also is in possession of an anatheme. 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 So, we know who are given the shards. Right? But it's like... Yep. How did the rest... So, in my mind, what I actually thought was going to happen was it was going to be like... This this entire book was about the shards, like how it like it was going to start with this really cool short story, and then it was going to branch from there. But that's not what happened. No, not at all. So let's get into the second book of the story. Cal, that was by Graham McNeil. Uh, this was Sarah, saying, sure was the yeah, first. Sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure, like a fucking yeah. Now it's really weird, yeah. T C H U R E. Yep. Yeah. So he also is in possession of an anatheme. And apparently five million cultists. Yeah. And it's like <laughs> the question is like what is considered an anatheme and what is actually like part of that sort? Because I feel like that's important. Like I want to believe well, that's I feel important. Like... It's it's very strange too because like I mean we've heard like the anatheme called before in like no no fear when um uh, Hauser was in Russes? No no no. Whoever the fucking whatever they call their captain there. Like he like walked in and was like, Oh, it's the anatheme, you know, like all these like fucking like visions and shit. Wait, where was this? On fucking uh Ah shit. The Space Wolves planet. Finneris. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's an anath. Yeah, so like, there's this concept that there's a sword used for ritual purposes and it's called an anatheme. But then there's also yeah. this like special anatheme that's been broken. Yeah, charge, like, they really need out. to specify <laughs> the names yeah. here. Um, also, if you remember, Kral Faust, who's the cultist, he was killed in Fear to Tread. Not Fear to Tread, sorry, no, no, Fear. Mix those up easily. Yeah, I do it every uh, time too. I don't know by, why. <laughs> by I don't know if he was killed or not by all Pearson, who retrieved the anatheme and then used it to do the exact same thing that Erebus did. Yeah. Where he goes in the warp, which he is in this book, by the way. Uh, all all Pearson. Yeah. Hell yeah. All Pearson. Also, I'm really curious about fucking Damon. I mean, that dude. Which one's he Damon? He died, and he was the one in the last book who got Cyrene. Yeah, I don't think he he doesn't pop up. I don't. I don't. Oh, think, I, I don't. I don't think he does. But just like his whole thing, like he died, and then yeah. I'm like, whoop, whoop, whoop. I wonder, whoop. like, <laughs> like I know, how, like, Vul- like I'm pretty sure, like Vulcan just like heals in front of you, and like you can see it happen. Like how the fuck? He's he also just, like prime work. True, but how, where the fuck did all person just like appear at? He's like, oh, I respond. Yeah, you're the same. 
All right, so we move on to Cal That Was by Graham McNeil. Um, this was a good book. It was just the longest. It was so long. And it, it was very good. And, like, I enjoyed the story, but it wasn't, like, I was just so ultramarined out that I was like, yes. I don't care. Well, like, prepare to be even more so. Uh, well, at least, like, the other one's, like, 30, 40 pages. This was, like, over 100 pages. And I'm just like, God damn it, when does this end? So... Caltha was is the story about Ventanas. So if you guys remember from the end of No No Fear, there is a large ultramarine contingent and warbird contingent still on Calth, but they're living underground. Mm-hmm. That is the like crux of 90% of this book. Yeah. And I mean it the concept's like interesting because like you have a human who is basically like experiencing like what it's like to like not like be like shut in i mean i guess this is almost kind of like how like early covid was in other countries Mm -hmm. like they were literally like locked in their houses yeah and like that like cabin fever well one thing that i think is really frustrating about this book is we have all these stories about these people and cal fighting underground and it's like, is it important? Yeah, I didn't know that I know, but it's cool to see, like, Vantanis again. Yeah, it is, but it's like... I would have, like, just seen it later. Yeah, it would It would have made more sense if, like, they get rescued or something, you know no, what I mean? No. But, like, <laughs> they've already decided. They decided in No No Fear that they're like, we'll come back in a couple hundred years. <laughs> yeah, like, which is fucking stupid. Like, if you could yeah. have done it then, like, like, all right, we're full capacity. Yeah. Let me send one of the other 499 planets a ship from one of their places to come pick some of you guys up. Yeah, so I think they were saying, like, the concept is the radiation was too powerful for the ships to exist to pick them up anymore. They're like, the sun's at a maximum critical level we have to leave, and now you're you're fucked. Good luck on the planet. So like, we get all these stories, and they're cool. Like, they are really cool stories. But it's like, what's the point? Yeah. Well, the whole time, what really got me through this, I'm not going to lie, is like, do you remember when we did, uh, like, D&D, but 40K? Dude, that was the best one. I that and Call, Call of Cthulhu was Call also Cthulhu very was fun. Great. <laughs> I kept thinking, like, what a cool, like, setting that would be for, like, a D&D campaign. Like, you're on Calf and living underground. Man, I miss D&D. So do I. It was a good time. Hey, man, if we have enough uh, people who are interested, you could probably oh, convince yeah. us. We could probably, we would definitely do like a, a Warhammer d and esh sesh where we could do some crazy stuff with the listeners. That'd be so much fun. That'd yeah, so we fun. had a really fun one. Shit, I was like an archaeologist or something. You were a Xeno sympathizer. Yeah, and I, I just went off your... I fucked up all of your plans. That was like my entire goal in D and D. Was like, how can I fuck with Gavin? Yeah, oh, you, I, he definitely wants me to go that way. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take the railroad instead. <laughs> it actually was really cool. You ended up like I remember it was a Necron Tomb world, and you ended up with like an assassin, and it was like whoever killed each other, the dead soul would end up inhabiting the Necron Warlord. But you act yeah, like had someone a... blew up. Or, like I think it was. The assassin, like, just dropped a grenade and you both died at the same time. Yeah, and I was pissed. (laughs) That was so funny. Both of you inhabited him. And so, like, you guys would constantly roll to gain Yeah, one of us was arms, one was the legs. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, hey, man, I really need you to go left. And he's like, hmm, let's go backwards. (laughs) Damn it. That was so funny. Uh, so uh, we have Cal that was, and that is really the story of of Ventanis fighting um, the remaining word bears. So there's two big word bear captains that are left, and that is Federal Fell and Ha Belloth. They also possess shards. So you can see as I'm reading this book, I'm like, ah, it's all coming together. We're gonna <laughs> follow the shard people. Then we continue to heart of darkness is that the name of it i think so trying to pull it up yeah dark heart 
Yeah, that's the one. I literally am on the last page of it. Yeah, so Dark Which Hall- I don't know what else Anthony Reynolds has written, but this was a decent one. It, it was, was decently decent. written. So this is the only one that, like, continues the story, in my opinion. It talks yeah, about I've been enjoying what it. happens with Corferion. On the last page, it talks about what happens with Corferion. After. I'm literally on it. So, <laughs> yeah. so like, on the last, so like, literally, this whole Shit. thing. Oh no, we dropped the light. Dylan's in darkness. Oh god. Oh god. It. He is I in the smacked catacombs. the cable. I lost the cable that, or the thing that was holding it up. Shit. He's in the catacombs of Calf. <laughs> yes. In I'm role playing now. Oh damn. <laughs> Can we get him back? I'm in my uh, my Marvel jammies. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just drinking beer. I've had a rough day, so I'm I'm trying to get drunk here. I need okay. a, I actually need another beer. I'm almost out. Did you not have more than one next to you? I had the whole six pack. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Oh no. We better start so, yelling for Katie. Talk about Dark Heart while I fetch another another can. All right. So, Dark Heart, we get to meet an, a new word bearer, of course, because, a you know, one. Right, we no gotta one. have more, and guess what? Flush the, what the fuck's his name? Marduk? Marduk? Something like that. Either way. So, how the, what this story is placed is, it's like right before the old Shabarines come on to the, the satellite thing that Gorfarion was on. Yeah, and, we knew that in like the the previous in Future Shred. Or no. God damn it! Holy what shit! I didn't even Sir. touch it this time. Sir, you're really scaring me. I'm scaring myself. I'm sure my wife is like, "What the hell's going on out there?" So like, this was actually like a big negative that I have for the book in general, and I think this this story really outlined it. Is the fact that like, oh, we're being introduced to more word bears. Oh my god, everything is falling apart on me. Dylan, you are really struggling. Ah, dude, it's it's been a really bad day. <laughs> it's just embarrassing. Oh, I'm embarrassed for all of us, too. So, I don't know if you remember. Do you remember um, in No No Fear, the cast list was like three pages long? Yes, it was long as hell. Be prepared to add another 20 names to the cast list because basically this market cows book is it takes all of those names it gives them a story and then adds characters to their story so we have another word bearer in dark heart he does some crazy shit by killing his master who's another word bearer that we don't know (laughs) yes and we get the story of how he does that which is kind of like the fluff of the story in my opinion yeah, for sure. And, and that's like half the book. Like, God, just turn on your light in your room. What are you hey, doing? Hey, man, I'm I'm committed to find the piece that was holding this up. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. You look like you're in some sort of cave. I am in the cave. This is how my wife gets rid of me. She just throws me in the cave. All right, I'm turning the light on. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd agree. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. All right, now that the struggle bus is over. <laughs> okay. Anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, like I said, you just get introduced to so many word bears, so many ultramarines, the enemies they have, the allies they have. It just seems like so many people to remember. Well, the and, thing is, the word bears are their own fucking enemies. Yeah, and at this point in the story, it's like, I've already had to memorize so many fucking names. And as we continue to go down here, I'm like, isn't this kind of the part where you start eliminating people? Like, we we haven't even seen the white scars. Like, am I really going to have to remember those legions? I don't know any salamanders. They're going to come up. And it's just like, the one who I, whose name I can't even remember. A Vulcan? <laughs> <laughs> no, the one from... Uh... Oh, yeah, I don't remember his name. Tarsus. It was like two names. It was hyphenated. I don't know. Or combinated. There was a comma. Yeah. (laughs) Taka? I I don't know. No, no. That was a demon, maybe. Maybe. (laughs) Sounds very similar. Oh, and the word bearer names in this fucking book? I can't stand the way word bearers have their names. 
but you get a million of them. So yeah, some other word bearer, he ends up allying himself with Corpharion in this book, and you get to see what happens at the very end to Corpharion in this story. And uh, it's kind of a cop-out, in my opinion. Doesn't even surprise me. Next we have The Traveler by David Annandale. Dude, I don't... Have they done anything else before? I mean, I know it's Alpha Legion, I'm assuming. Or is it just a one random page for Alpha Legion? Where do you see that? Literally the page after the Dark Heart. It's like a... Now, oh, maybe they just called it Alpha he One. He does the damnation of Pythos. Oh, I've heard really bad things. So have I. Like, so I, I've, I've literally the- never seen a good thing about it. I've I've read this story. Have you? Yes. Interesting. So this story, The Traveler. It's like one of those stories. It's written almost like you've seen like Black Mirror, right? The show Black Mirror. You know how each episode is its own standalone thing. And this is an anthology, so it's supposed to be that. Yeah. This is to to the extreme of that, to where, hey, we're going to write a story called The Traveler. And it's going to be standalone to the point where it literally has nothing to do with any of the rest of the... Oh, really? I don't like that. Yeah. And it's like... Basically, the story takes place in a one of the what do they call them? Arca? Ar- they're called something like one of the caves. They're called something. Ancologies? Ancologies? The fuck are you saying? Archaeology? They're they're like the cavern systems that they have, like specific caverns that people are living. In, they call them like ancologies or ancologies or something. Sure, like that. I'll go with it. Yeah, like like um. Ventanas is living in like Ancology 10, Ancology X. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's one of the people living living there. <laughs> it's from his point of view. And I do have to say, this is the first story that you really get. It, it has to do with Electo Dominicus in this Ancology. And it's the first story that you really get, like how fucked up the Electo Dominicus can get. Oh, interesting. And how fucked up kind of people in general and how like demons and evilness infiltrate the Lecto Dominicus. What we which is what we see in 40k. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we have um Inquisitors, part of the church, part of the ecclesiarchy, but they get really fucked up. It's like how does that happen? And we see that here in this story. It's really cool, but it's completely standalone. It is literally like no bearing on the story, no named characters, no characters that persist in the future. It's just like its own kind of idea. And it's fun, but it's a bit of a slog because the, the problem with it is, is it exists within all these stories that have to deal with demons and weird word bearer shit. And if this was just a story I read one day out of nowhere, I'd be like, oh, this is this is interesting. But unfortunately, it's a story I read in between two word bear stories. And I'm like, oh, this is <laughs> kind of boring. Uh, uh, more word bears. Can't wait. Yeah, it's not a word bear thing, but it's like a demon thing. Yeah. And it has. I don't all, know, when you see like uh, the little bit, love, the whatever. Like the Dominicus? Yes. You imagine, imagine, immediately think like, oh, yep, word bear bullshit. Well, the Lecto of any case is there are parts of it that are like super holy. Like when you think of your Freddy Keeler and the saint aspect of that. Yeah. But this part is really interesting because it's like, what if the Lecto Dominicus was secretly fucked up? And then now it's like in Warhammer 40k, you're like, what if the Lecto Dominicus was not so secretly fucked up? It was just fucked up. <laughs> 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 So, like, what you see here in this short story, and my, it's a really cool short story, in my opinion, because it's, like, that is what happens today. Yeah. So, like, this is the first instance of the Lecto Divinicus not just being, like, oh, we're first survivors and good people. It's, like, maybe it's a cult mob mentality, and this is the reason the Emperor doesn't want it to happen. Right here. Yeah. This is, like, Exhibit A. The Emperor is, like, um... 
the. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, I've been telling you guys this for fucking ever. <laughs> yeah. Do we have the story called A Deeper Darkness? So, A Deeper Darkness uh, follows the story of... What is his name? It's a guy. Mm, a male. Um, he was on uh, Peleon. Peleon. He was. He was a. <laughs> I don't know why, but I imagine Peloton, and just imagine some guy that's really fucking going on his bike. <laughs> that's what this guy seems like. He. Uh, he's a character from. Um, no, no fear. He's on Cal. He's one of the people that goes into the. If you remember from No, No Fear, there's actually. Do you know the Triarch? There's two of them. Two triarchs? Yes. Yeah, so one of the triarchs is the dude that you know very well that was with the dreadnought the whole time. Yeah, the, the I can't remember his name, but the like guardian the, uh, or champion Lyos, or whatever. Lois something like or that. Something, yeah. Um but in the story No No Fear, and I don't remember where the other triarch comes from, but if you look at the cast list, like there is a, there is another triarch there. I don't remember where he is or what he's doing, but he's there. And uh, in this story, this is actually about, like, his underground cavern and what he's doing. But the main point of the story is from Peleos. He is obsessed with killing a specific word bearer that he believes is, like, the super evil person. And he discovers uh, a lair that the word bearers are in. And he goes to, to find it. Um, and guess what? Word bearers are doing weird cult shit. <laughs> I'm shocked. Oh, what? <laughs> so he goes to find it, but there's like a lot of stuff going on that he has to deal with. That's pretty much all I can say. There's like some demon stuff involved, obviously. And uh, I don't know. One thing that I really got from this book is like there's a demon in every book. Yeah, I can see that. Somebody transforms into a demon, and I'm like, It's, well, kinda, how is this so easy now? Yeah, it kind of gets like Fulgrim had to go through an entire process. Dude, we don't know what the fuck so, happened to Fulgrim. We, we can't even describe <laughs> the process. It's like so insane. Angron's the only one that still makes sense. Kind of. And he Hell, had even Argon told him made sense. He had to murder planets, dude. I think that's Angron. That makes sense. Yeah. So the thing is, like, there, you have all these people like turning into demons, and you see it all over the place, but. I don't know. This one, it was uh, it was okay. It was like the way he beat it. It was a very Greek mythology like. Interesting. Like if you you know, or maybe even Roman. Like you you know how like, it was almost like the Ultramarines. You know they're they're very Roman esque culture. Yeah. It was like oh, okay, let's like create a, a Greek or a Roman mythology myth. Kind of thing. So this this guy goes to battle blind in the darkness against this evil thing. You know, it's a very much it reads like a mythology kind of book. Gotcha. One thing I noticed about the Ultramarines in this book series, which was made me dislike the Ultramarines even more. Like they may be my least favorite <laughs> Legion now. Well, not least favorite. Warberries are like forever there. But oh yeah, they love to put titles and like ideologies behind everything like they love like the mark of calf like we we held this mark as an honor well then i can't wait for when we do our episode with the horse sour guys one of the guys really hates the ultramarines and the other one loves it and i can't wait for us to shit on the ultramarines yeah (laughs) they're just so pretentious yes and they're so like goody two shoes like we have to hold the banner because the banner symbolizes our way. And like any yes. other legion would be like, dude, shut the fuck up. Just hold a sword instead because you can do things with it. <laughs> exactly. Like this is this is actually useful. Yeah. And they're just like they're just very much about symbolism. And yeah, I got them rerolls. Yeah. They're like, oh, we have to <laughs> rally behind this concept. Like you have people like polishing their armor still and having people polish their armor because they're, they're like, oh, we can't let them give up hope. And I'm like, you guys are so like you guys are underground mind, on a fucking planet that has no sun. Your mind's not in the battle. 
Like, get in the battle. Like, if the Space Wolves were in your situation in Calth, they would have fucking figured that shit out a month ago and just oh, murdered yeah. every fucking person there possible. But they just don't, like... The, sp- the Ultramarines are just so annoying to me because they just have this mentality that's about symbolism, honoring... Also, they have this giant fucking laser in orbit, and they can, like, fucking find, like, where, like, horde bearers are. Just fucking use the laser and kill yeah. them all. So the concept is the word bearers are too dug in to be able to just blow them up. Just, just keep like, shooting it. Yeah, that's what I was, <laughs> it's like. Yeah, if you're you don't have to use one shot, use two shots. <laughs> five, six, I don't yes. know. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's a fucking takes. power problem. <laughs> yeah, so it, it is very strange the way that they're fighting the war and the symbolism that they use the ultramarines in my opinion in this book kind of they just come out as like really annoying like they're just annoying people that that, that makes the word bears the annoying legions by <laughs> some of my least favorite legions and they just they really kill it they really hit that hard so um then we have the underworld war by adb so i have not read super far into the underworld war I can't wait for this one just because I love ADB and I expect it to be good. I do like ADB. I will say I know people that come up. I know Argyle Tall comes up in this one. I don't know whether or not this is... um... This is necessarily like a... It is underground. They are fighting some things. But I, I think that it, that just might be how it is. Like, I think, like, at the end of the day, it's going to be they're fighting underground in Cal. That would be a good fucking short story. Just a fucking short story of an actual battle going on in the fucking, like, World Eaters pits. I think uh, this one has a lot to do with the Valborak as well. I haven't been able to read a lot into it. Just from, like, reading what I have, I think it's a, like a Valborak story. Yeah, that makes sense. And Argot Hall is in it, which is interesting. I don't know if it's like a flashback. I haven't been able to read that much into it, but yeah. Um, then we have in a theme. So in a theme is by John French. I have no idea what this book is about. Me either. Zero idea. We'll have to. I, I've done zero research. I'm going to be honest. I have been really bad. Granted, John, I fe- John, <laughs> normally I researched the day of. Was not able to do that today. John French is in like. What is it? what else is John French wrote? He's he's written a bit before, right? Yeah, I think he's only done short stories. I don't think we've had Never. a book from him. We have not. He does Talaran when we come around to it. And Slaves to Darkness, which is, like, a big one. I know I haven't been, like, disappointed in his work so far. Yeah, I, I feel in the same way. Okay, then we have uh, Unmarked. Unmarked is a story, the continuation story of all Pearson. That's all I have for you. Now that I'm excited for, because I find the old perpetuals person. interesting. Old Especially because they said there was five of them. So the Perpetuals, I have a thing with the Perpetuals. I have like a, a love-hate relationship. Oh, yeah? You have a thing for them? I, thing. <laughs> I can just like keep going forever. Oh, look. <laughs> so you're telling me you're dead. I can keep going and you come back? <laughs> All right. Well, All right. <laughs> Here's my problem with the Perpetuals. I feel like there are too many. Like, the concept of perpetuals well, is Well, they're supposed to be so five, fair. right? <clears throat> yeah, but what are the... Are, are they counting? We have Alderson, Damon, Grammaticus. Those are the three we've met. We know the Emperor's one. Are they counting? We know Vulcan is one. I would, n- I would assume Emperor and... Are they counting Vulcan? Are they counting the lady that we now know is the perpetual? Well, I... <clears throat> I mean, the, when they mentioned, like, how many there were, they definitely didn't know about her. I know there's another woman that appears that's also one. 
So I'm going to assume Vulcan doesn't count towards their list because they probably don't know because Vulcan's probably never died at that point. I mean, we're facing seven at this point now. And what I'm saying yeah. is, like, that's seven characters. That's a lot of perpetuals, in my opinion. And also, like, we also know we have a theory that Kroger is a perpetual. Oh, like, but seven out of millions of planets that's true but they also play a very vital role in the story in my opinion true but we also believe that krogers are perpetual right fuck which one's kroger the iron warrior that oh i mean unconfirmed right unconfirmed but a theory of ours yeah i mean it's very possible that they said that there was five or whatever and just like did it although I mean, they found Cyrene as soon as she was brought back to life, so there has to be, like, some way that they, like, they know. Yeah, they, like, they definitely were infiltrating that ship well before Cyrene was a perpetual. There's no way that they just, like, in a week were able to just jump on the ship. I just gotta give a big shout-out real quick, because I just saw this message on Discord. Uh, Daniel is a G. He just messaged me on Discord saying, hey... I found an acceptable copy of Vulcan Lives on eBay, and I have it sent to you. You motherfucker. Holy shit. We don't deserve Daniel. That's all I got to (laughs) say. Gavin just broke every single glass in this house. (laughs) Everything's fine. You're telling me you don't have one of these? I do not, but I'm about... You want one of these? Yeah, I can't. Dude, what a fucking G. Definitely a guy. It's kind of it's kind of crazy. This is actually hard to come by. The only reason I came by it is because the book, the game store that I play at, is like super old, and there just so <laughs> happened to be like no one's buying books, so like this just happened to be on the shelf. I definitely just broke a uh, a miniature. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how many have I broken when we've been playing? Because like I like. Grab several times, and like my hand just like stops working. I just drop them. Like, well, that's three fucking models broken again. Can't wait to glue those back together. You break like a crazy amount, though. Every single time. Broke. I think I just broke a devil fish, bro. Oof. Well, as long it as might have been that, a might have been a hammerhead. No shake, dude. You need, you need those need those rail guns, guns dude. <laughs> Man, you're gonna one shot all my dread knights off the table. No, yeah, for real. I definitely will. That would be disgusting. You, I mean, you pretty much made my army useless because that's all my army has. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, that Dread Knight? How many wounds do your Dread Knights have? Twelve. But I can uh, possibly ignore mortals. You could ignore those three mortal wounds. Yep, so I might, I might survive. <laughs> what is it? It's like, it's three mortal wounds, flat six damage... Plus D3. Is it D3 or D6? It might be D3. I think it's D3. So like Isn't a, it like mo- minimum most of 11. the time it's a minimal of like, yeah. Like minimum of 10. It goes from 10 to 12. Yeah. Oof, that's scary shit. <laughs> that's very scary. I mean, it's going to fucking break the shit out of them because I are all ones only. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you do. You're... <laughs> I don't know. Let's see Is what that the last story? Uh, yeah. The one about all oh, Pearson. That was it. That's all we know. We know it's, it's, it's written person. by Dan Abnett too. So Dan I have high expectations that it's. I'm assuming good. Dan Abnett had a lot of vested interest in that story because that was like the story he wanted to go on after No No Fear. You know what I mean? Yeah, true. So I think it's going to be pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, yeah, I think that's our our preview. Is there anything else you want to talk about? I mean, we're Three minutes over, but I don't even consider one hour a mark anymore because we just go over all the time. I mean, I'm I'm good, you know. I'm just enjoying my beer now out of my Thousand Sons Heresy Lodge mug. Mm, yes, it looks <laughs> very cool. <laughs> well, guys, that is our preview of Mark of Kalth. Next week we will have our review of Market Path, and the week after that we should have an, another lodge meeting with the Horse Hour podcast. If you guys haven't listened to them, go ahead and give them a listen. We want to support them. They want to support us. Let's keep us small podcasts, you know, connected. Because I think that's cool. That's all. That's what community is about, right? We want to be, we want to be friends with each other. 
Uh, I will also be on there. So their Q and A episode, you should listen because it or not Q and A. It's gonna be like obscure lore or some shit like that. I should be the very first one. So if you don't want to listen past that, I mean I'm pretty great. So I don't know if you want to <laughs> listen to that. Um, as always, you can contact us. Uh, contact us. Damn, I'm not even drunk. At hairstylelegendgmail.com. Join the Discord at. Well, join the Discord by going to our Twitter, which is pinned to the top at Heresy Lodge. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you're just listening to us, please like and subscribe to our YouTube because it helps us immensely. Well, leave if a comment. Feel, yes, leave a comment too. We love talking to you guys. If you want to contribute to the podcast, please leave us a tip on our Twitter. It's at Heresy Lodge. And that's it. We'll be back next week, guys, for our review. You guys have a good one.